You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 10. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and we are on episode number 10. Why am I so excited about that? Well, when I learned how to podcast from my friend Cliff Ravenscraft, he would always say, do your first 10 sessions and don't be too critical of those first 10. Just get them done, stay on schedule and make them really great. And then you can start to kind of see where you can improve and make things even better. So I've been trying not to be too critical on myself with these first 10 sessions, but I appreciate you hanging on and listening and they're only going to get better from here, but I feel like I've just hit a big milestone, 10 sessions under my belt. So thanks for being with me. And today is all about social media and selling. And I have a very special guest, Laura Roder of LKRSocialMedia.com. Now, Laura was one of my very first social media mentors a few years back. I have a funny story. I'm pretty sure I've told her, but when I was still working with Tony Robbins for about a good year, I thought about what I would do if I branched out on my own. So like most people in the corporate environment, I didn't just jump out and do it. It took me a little while to get the guts to actually move on and start my own business. So in that first year, I actually would study as much as I could about social media and find out who was really doing it great and model their strategies and and find out about their business model. So I purchased a one-on-one session with Laura. This was literally, I bet, three years ago. And I wanted to learn about how she built her business with social media. And she was really cool. She was really willing to just tell me all of her secrets of behind the scenes of how she built her business. So I paid for this session, but it happened to fall during the workday. It was at a lunchtime period, but it was still while I was at work at Tony Robbins. I hope he's not listening. So with that, I was paranoid that someone would hear me because I was not ready to tell anybody about my new plans. I wasn't even sure if I was going to do it. So I snuck into this abandoned office on site at work. And then I hid under the desk. So no one would hear me. Listen, the walls were a little thin over there. And so I did my very first call with Laura hidden under a desk at the Tony Robbins office. Pitiful. I know I'm kind of embarrassed to even admit it, but again, I was paranoid and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I didn't want anyone to know my plans just yet. Well, that call really was a springboard for me. I got excited after that call and I knew this is what I wanted to do. So I'm guessing about six months after that, I started to put all the wheels in motion to create this business. And I'm so glad I did because it's the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life to create this business and get to work with all of you. So thanks so much for being here today. Now, today's session is all about selling with social media. And the reason I brought Laura on is because she is a master at selling with social media. She does it in a way that's incredibly inviting, not too spammy or aggressive. And she has some raving fans that just can't get enough of everything she puts out there. So I'm delighted to introduce you to Laura today if you've never heard from her before. And if you already know Laura, well, she's going to share some really great content today. Hopefully some of it will allow you to add even more value to your social media strategies. So let's jump in. Laura, thanks so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Very, very happy to be here and get to chat with you. Yeah, we have a lot of good stuff to cover. So first, before we get into all the good social media stuff, I would love for you to tell everybody a little bit about how you got your start, where you came from, and what you're doing now. Yeah, so I've been running this business that I have now doing social media and online marketing training for a few years. Uh, Before that, my very first business was as a web designer when I lived in Chicago. And uh, talk about selling that did not scale in any way, (laughs) not using amazing tools like social media. You know, back when I was a web designer, I think a lot of people can identify with this. I got all of my clients through networking events. I spent so much time going to the local Chamber of Commerce events, you know, hustling, handing out my little portfolio. 
And I remember spending so much time waiting for the bus <laughs> in freezing Chicago. Oh, that's miserable. <laughs> you know, it's a blizzard. I'm trying to go to the networking event or to try to go meet with my clients. So I'm trying to dress nice, but no one, no one wants to wear heels in a blizzard. No. Um, <laughs> so I think some of those experiences are really what led me to be really interested in, you know, not just social media, which has always been a passion of mine, but how do you use these tools to make a business successful without having to stand in a snowstorm? <laughs> and that's, I think, what we're really going to talk about today. How do you use these leveraged, scalable tools like social media to actually make sales for your business? Definitely. So let's just kind of start at the top with the, the I wanted you to come on the show because I feel like you have had massive success at producing sales with social mm -hmm. media. And this is an area that a lot of people struggle with. Why do you think there's such a disconnect between selling and social media? I find that people are way too far on one extreme or the other. And so if you're listening, you can see which camp you fall in. Uh, some people are absolutely terrified to talk about their business <laughs> on social media. A lot of the people that come to me are like this. I imagine it's the same for you, where people will say, you know, I just don't want to seem spammy. I don't want to seem pushy. And they'll have this great following on Twitter or on Facebook, but they're never selling anything because they're worried about coming across, you know, too pushy, too salesy, too spammy. The other group of people are kind of on the other extreme where they're just selling, 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 selling on social media. And they think, oh, I don't want to waste my time chatting with people or doing this relationship stuff. But you really have to do both. You have to do the relationship and the chat and the engagement, and you have to do the selling. So I find that people have that disconnect because they're way too far on one extreme or the other, and they need to find that middle ground. So very true. Give me some examples of what that middle ground might look like for some people. So the first thing you have to remember is people are following you because they want to hear about your business. I think this is so easy to forget. It's so funny when someone says, you know, can I post about my promotion on Twitter? Is This is a question that I get a lot. Is that allowed? Can I do that? <laughs> and I say, well, of course you can, because why else would they be following you on Twitter if they didn't want to hear about your business? Why would they like your business Facebook page if they didn't want promotions? When you look at yourself as a customer, you love getting promotions from your favorite brands. I mean, that's really the number one thing you're looking for. When you sign up for a retailer, when you sign up for their email list or you like their Facebook page, you're after that coupon, you're after that discount code. So absolutely post your promotions on Facebook and on Twitter. That That is the appropriate place for them. Okay, good. Definitely. And how about you teach these really cool strategies, you call them under the radar strategies. Mm -hmm. what, what are those? Under the radar selling on social media is how you can see these little sales messages um, into your social media status updates. And, and here's what that looks like. So I always say, pretend you're having lunch with a friend and your friend asks you, how's business going? When you describe your business, you are telling your friend, you know, that you got a new customer that you're really excited about, that you're developing a new product or service, or that you have a new promotion coming up, or that the last one did really well. These are not pushy. These are not salesy. You're, you're simply telling your friend what's going on. And that's the kind of under the radar selling that works really, really well on social media. So sometimes, like I said, sometimes you do want to just link straight to the promotion and say, hey, we're doing buy one, get one free. Here's the link. And sometimes you might want to write something that's a little bit more under the radar, that's a little bit more sneaky, saying, wow, I can't believe what an amazing response we've gotten to our latest buy one, get one free promotion. Here's maybe a little quote from a customer about how excited they were to get something for free. And then you put a link back to your promo. Or it can be just as simple as talking about what you're doing in your business. So saying, hey, you know, I could say for me, hey, I'm recording a podcast with Amy Porterfield in half an hour, really excited about that, all about selling on social media. So that shows people, okay, you know, Laura gets to be on this very prestigious podcast. So that's <laughs> going to impress them, of course. They get to see that I'm an expert on selling on social media, that I'm an expert enough that people are interviewing me. 
These are all things that drive sales towards my business. And it's a very natural way to talk about them online. You're sort of talking about what you sell under the radar instead of directly just saying, here's my product, buy it. You know, you actually do that so well. I've really learned that strategy from you. And it's such a great way to build relationships with people because like you said, it's under the radar. They're not looking at it like, oh, she's bragging about Mm -hmm. being on a podcast or whatever. They're like, oh, that's really cool. And they're learning from you. So I'm sure they're thinking, oh, I need to think about what other podcasts I can be on or be interviewed. So Mm -hmm. I feel like you're teaching through all your posts as well. Absolutely. That's what people are interested in hearing about for your business. Yeah, definitely. Now, how do you feel about, you know, you mentioned selling or promoting on a, let's say a Facebook page directly to a sales page versus Mm -hmm. let's say you do a webinar or a teleclass or something like that. Do you have a preference as to how you promote these different things on social sites? It's a really, really good question. What I've found is that it's really a difference between people who are new to you and people who are already in your audience. Uh, I haven't had much success driving new people straight to a sales page. People usually need to get to know you a little better. They're usually not buying right on that first contact, the first time they hear from you. So Facebook ads, for example, when I'm running a Facebook ad, and I'm running it to a sales page, I only show that to people who already like my page. Because if they've clicked like, you know, they've at least come across me once, they already know who I am. And I find that sometimes if you have your ad set up right, you can make sales directly from Facebook. So again, that shows where you can obviously link to your sales page direct from your Facebook page, not from ads, but from your actual page, because everybody there has already liked you. They're already familiar with you. Um, However, if I'm trying to draw in new people, so let's say I'm running an ad that shows to people who don't like my page already, then I'll always send them to some sort of lead gen thing. So a free report, a free webinar, so they can get to know me. And then after they know me and trust me, then I can show them what I have for sale. Now, you just reminded me of something. You're really good at a lot of different social media sites, meaning you use them all really well. I focus mainly on Facebook, but you do Mm -hmm. a lot of work over on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. And of course you use YouTube and all the other good social sites. When we're talking about list building, because I know you also believe in email marketing. So once you get those leads, then leading them to a sale um, becomes a lot easier when it's a quality list. So how are some ways you use social media to grow your email list? To me, the most important way to use social media to grow your list is simply to post to uh, opt-ins. So post materials that are collecting email addresses. So that could be, uh, again, a free report. It could be a webinar, whatever it is for your business. But it's a landing page that is there to collect email addresses. You should schedule that in your social media so you're posting that link over and over again. You know, something that is really cool about social media is that If you're following best practices, you are growing your following organically all the time. So, you know, I was just on Twitter a minute ago. I go to my mentions page. I see that I have six new followers, right? Well, those are people that likely have never heard of me before. They're people that are totally new to my world. They haven't seen my webinars. They haven't seen my opt-ins. This is a mistake people often make is, is they do, well, a webinar is a great example. They do something like a webinar, they have a great promotion, they get a lot of new people on their list, but then they don't do anything with it. After that, I put all my webinars up as recordings after the fact. So you can just opt in and you can get it as a recording. And I schedule those links in social media. So a lot of people just do it once, they never link to it again. If you have a webinar that works really great for list building, people opt in to see that webinar, then schedule it on your Twitter, on your Facebook, whatever, Maybe once a month, you have a little status update that says, have you seen my webinar about selling on social? Here's the link. Now you have it scheduled. You have it going out automatically. You constantly need to be leading people from social media to these pages where they're giving you their email address. Oh, such a great point because people are seeing your posts at such different times of the day. You know, when you post once on Facebook, I can guarantee you not many people are going to see that. So posting consecutively, you know, over a period of time and scheduling it. I think you, Mm -hmm. I know you are a firm believer in scheduling posts across social sites. And when you don't, you're just going to forget. It's not going to be something that you do on a consistent basis. So really smart strategy to schedule those posts, but be strategic in the post you're scheduling and 
do things such as the replay of a webinar where you're sending it out at different times of the day on different social sites to be growing your list all the time. So great point there. Now, I was on a webinar all about selling on social media. You did this webinar not too long ago. And on that webinar, you introduced something to really understand how social is working for you. And it was Google Analytics and something about social value. And I have to admit, I had never even seen it before, didn't even know it existed. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think this is a tool that people can start to see what's working for them when it comes to social media and selling. Absolutely. So it drives me nuts when people say, oh, Social media is great, but you know you can't really track it. You can't really see how it's working. You that, hear it all the so time. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> yes, I don't know why it's such a common myth. You can see exactly how social media is working. You can see exactly who is coming to your website from which social media site, how long they're spending on your page, what they're buying. So what you're talking about specifically, there's this whole area of Google Analytics that's this this hidden gold mine, and it is new. I think that's why a lot of people don't know about it. Okay. But if you go in your analytics account, and it's under your traffic sources, under your traffic sources, you'll see something called social. And under social, there's actually this entire section of pages and data that's all about what people are doing once they come to your site from the social media site. So uh, one example is there's something on there called landing pages, which shows you when people come from social media, which pages do they come to first, which basically shows you what are people sharing on social media. And by the way, you'll be surprised (laughs) what people are clicking on because it's not just blog posts. You know, when I look at this on my site, I see a lot of blog posts, but I see a lot of opt-in pages like we were talking about earlier. And I see sales pages for my products. People do click on that from social media and people do share that when it's compelling. The social... The social value thing in particular is really, really interesting. So to make social value work, you will need to set up e-commerce tracking in Google Analytics, which sounds a little overwhelming. You are going to need a little tech support on that one. But it's one of those things, once you set it up, now you have all of your financial data on exactly how much money social media is making you. So the social value thing actually shows you how in real dollars, how much you've made from people who came to your site via social media, either either directly, like the last click was from social media and then they bought, or if social was kind of a part of their journey in making that sale, which is more common. Oh my gosh, this it will paint such a great picture as to what's working and what's really not working in your social media strategy. You can see exactly what's working. And, you know, I'm just, I have mine open right now while we're, while we're talking. I see that I get so many more sales from Facebook than I do from Pinterest, for example. And for a small business, we have to be picky about how we spend our time. You know, we don't have this, okay, I'm, we're going to devote five marketing people to Pinterest and five to right. Facebook. <laughs> Doesn't really work that way. So it's really important to be able to make these data back decisions. And it's just such a stress reliever because I know so many people think I have to be on all the sites. You know, you really don't have to be on all the sites. And now you can look at this data and prove to yourself, okay, out of my social sales, you know, 80, for me, 80% are coming from Facebook and only 1% are coming from Pinterest. Well, it'd probably be smart just to spend my time on Facebook. So very true. I get the question asked all the time. How do you manage your time so that you're across all social media sites? And I always say I'm not. I mean, I mm-hmm. really focus on Facebook. Twitter, I do a little on YouTube. Pinterest, I haven't really gotten into. And Google Plus, my audience just isn't spending time there based on the data. Mm-hmm. And so this is such a great lesson for solopreneurs and entrepreneurs that have small teams like us, or those people that actually work as a social media manager in their job. And they're constantly being asked how, what's the ROI here? How are you spending your time? Where are we spending our time online? This data is going to show you where you should be spending your time and what's working. Yeah. And I want to add things like setting up e-commerce tracking. I mean, like I said, it might be a little more difficult than, you know, just posting an update on Facebook. But I always say, even if it took you a whole week, wouldn't it be worth it? Like, even if you had to sit down and do nothing else for a week, which clearly is not the case. Now you do it once. And for the rest of time, you have this incredibly compelling data 
tying the dollar amounts back to the social media sites. Yes. And now there's probably 20 videos out there right now telling you how to do it. Mm -hmm. So there's always going to be some free content out there to show you, especially with Google Analytics. It's such a popular uh, tool anyway. So you're right, though. If it's going to take you all week, just do it because then it's set and go. Exactly. Yeah. I love all the tools that I know. Laura is a master at systems. We're going to have to have you on the show again just to talk about systems because that's really what I always following like whenever you have a system whatever you have a process I'm like how's Laura doing it I got to figure this out and so this Google Analytics I think most of us have it but I'm pretty sure 90 percent of us have never even looked at the social value area so really good stuff one of the reasons why I also wanted you on the show is because when I went to your webinar you taught something in that webinar that now I'm a little bit obsessed with and it's (laughs) called the golden page. That's what you call it, right? The golden page. Yeah. And it was such a cool strategy that anybody listening today can completely apply this to your business. I have no doubt it's not too hard, but it's something that's often overlooked. So I want you to kind of just tell us what it is, but let's start from the top and Mm -hmm. explain to people how they can create it and what it does for their business. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start with the whole golden page process uh, from social media. So this ties back to exactly what we were talking about before. And this really, by the way, spells out how you can make sales directly from social media. So we talked about, we were just saying how important it is to put those links to your opt-in pages on Facebook, on Twitter, on Pinterest, wherever you are. You want to link back to those pages that are capturing an email address. So here's how the golden page works. So let's go back to the example of a webinar opt-in page, but don't get overwhelmed if you don't do webinars. This can be anything collecting an email address. So it can be get a free report, sign up for my newsletter, whatever that looks like for your business where you're collecting an email address. The golden page is the page that comes up after they put in their email. So that's often called the thank you page, right? They've put in their email, you're saying, hey, thanks for opting in, this is the thank you page. Now don't make it a thank you page, make it a golden page (laughs) instead. (laughs) And the reason it's called the golden page is that you make an offer right on that page. And what works really well is some sort of big discount, some sort of bundle. And this is great for the business owner because these pages are hidden. Right, You only see it after you put in your email address. It's not publicly available on the internet. So you're able to give these big discounts that you couldn't give on your normal website. You know, you don't want to give away your product half off all over the web, but these are hidden pages. So you're able to give this one-time opportunity, and you should point that out on the page. You know, you'll only see this offer on this page. This is not on my website. This is not anywhere else. So it's an opportunity for some genuine scarcity, which if you sell online programs can sometimes be hard to find. So on the golden page, you say, this is a one-time offer and you do a big discount. You know, if you have a service, you might want to do something like a $1 trial for the service. And you will find, if you have a good offer and you might need to play around with your offer, you will get a certain amount of people that will always take that offer because they are excited to hear from you. They just gave you their email address. So you know that they want what you've got, right? They gave you their email. They say, I want to learn more about your business. And this is a way to tie social directly to sales. You post on your Facebook page the link to this opt-in. They go to the opt-in. They put in their email. And then they get to the golden page. So they're going directly from your Facebook status update to that golden page and making probably their first purchase in your business. Okay, so I've got some questions for you because this is such a great strategy. Like I said, anybody listening can Mm -hmm. find a way to incorporate it into their business So when you say a hidden page, for those people that get a little confused at the techie side of things, Mm -hmm. it's hidden in the sense that there's a URL that you haven't put out there and it's probably like LKR social media slash XY251 or something like that? Exactly. Exactly. So it's not hidden in the sense that if if I copied the link to that, I couldn't give it to a friend. And I tell people that only because you don't want to make it complicated. One thing Laura does really (laughs) well is keep things simple. Most people are not going to share that. You're not going to put share buttons on your golden page. 
Right. You don't necessarily want to drive tons of traffic to it. Like you said, it's an exclusive offer and you want people to feel like, Ooh, I just landed on something pretty cool that not everybody is going to see. So I think that exclusivity makes it pretty cool. Also, so I have a question. I do webinars all Mm -hmm. the time. And let's say I was going to do a webinar on Facebook advertising. And at the end of that webinar that people were signing up for, I was going to sell my ads program. So would I, after the thank you page, before they even see the webinar, would I sell my ads program or should I wait to sell that one on the webinar? How does that work? I've found that you actually get a lot of success doing the exact same offer that you would do on the webinar. So I would do the same offer. I would offer your Facebook ads program because if they're opting in for a webinar (laughs) about Facebook ads, clearly they're interested, right? This is a problem, a very active problem that they have in their business. And, And think about the mindset when someone's opting in. When someone has just opted in, they have just made a decision to take a step towards solving this problem. You know this is hot on their mind because they saw the page, they thought, oh, ads, ads have been so difficult. I need somebody to tell me about ads. I'm gonna put in my email so I can learn more about this. Well, then if there's an offer where they can get everything they need to make their Facebook ads successful, it kind of makes sense (laughs) that they might go for that offer. And what's interesting about webinars in particular, because I've also used this strategy for webinars, I literally give the exact same offer. So if it's a discount, you know, I'll give the exact same discount on that thank you page and on the webinar. And some people will take it in one place and not the other. You know, you'll get a certain amount that take it on the thank you page. And then you get those people that take it in the webinar and you think, why didn't you take it on the thank you page? Yeah. You, already, <laughs> you already saw it before, but they need a little more. You know, maybe they don't know you yet. They want to hear your talk, see that you have good information to offer. And maybe the ones taking it right away, they already know you. They already trust you. Or maybe, again, they're not paying that close of attention. This is why you have to post things over and over again. Maybe they just skipped it. Maybe yes. they didn't look at your golden page, but they saw the same offer on the webinar. So true. I think you just never know what people are thinking in the moment. And, Mm. and I do think you make such a great point that if they see that offer, they might not be ready to take it, but some people need to warm up to it. So if they see it and then you talk about it on the webinar, there's like a connection like, Oh yeah, I know what she's talking about. I already saw it before. So there's this weird connection I think they can make. Now tell me, I want to get really specific about this page. Is it like a regular sales page where you might have a sales video and then some sales copy and a buy button? Like, is it the full out sales page? I usually have mine a little shorter, but you can, you can really do it either way. Um, you can just, I mean, you can literally just copy and paste, you know, your entire sales page on that page. And you do want to put something little at the top because, you know, remember what, what your prospect is thinking. So if they've just opted in for a webinar, they get to the golden page. You do want to put something on the top of the page that says, Hey, thanks for opting in. You're all signed up for the webinar. So don't forget that bit or they'll just get confused because they think you've just redirected them, you know, somewhere totally different. Great point. Okay. So make that connection right away. Exactly. Make that connection right at the top of the page. And then I usually don't put my full sales page. I put something that's more of more that that feels like an ad for the special offer. So just telling them exactly what the special offer is, doing the very brief version of what's included in the program. And, you know, this is another point that explains why some people take it on the golden page and why some people take it on the webinar well, maybe they don't really understand what you're offering on the golden page. They need that longer explanation that you're going to give during the webinar of exactly what the program is. So you can, you know, this is a great area to test different things, but I usually do a pretty short and sweet, hey, this is a special offer. You get this program at a discount, kind of assuming that they either already know what the program is or they're going to go and do their own research if they need more info, which people can always do, right? If they think, what is this? They can go Google it. They can read your full sales page. Um, But I like to do something shorter there. Okay. So this is such a great strategy. So I kind of want to make sure that everyone really understands how it Mm -hmm. goes. So you build your opt-in, whatever it be. We like webinars, but it could, like you said, a free report, an ebook, maybe a three-part video series Mm -hmm. of a training someone puts together. You build your opt-in, your uh, opt-in page outside of any social media site. Mm -hmm. People opt in they then go directly to, so what happens is you put your name and email in and the screen basically changes. And now you're taken to a page that's about this offer that Laura's talking about. 
So now you could essentially get a sell right away. And maybe if they buy right then, maybe they won't come to your webinar because they feel mm-hmm. like I signed up and I got exactly what I needed. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they will come to the webinar. So there's just, you never know. And I think you're so right. There's a lot of experimenting here just to make sure you have the right combination of what you need for this whole process. And I would, something else I would add is something is always better than nothing. <laughs> you know, this is a big, big one of my philosophies. So I know a lot of people listening to this might think, oh, well, I don't have a special, I just have my newsletter. That's fine. That's great. That's the great place for this. You know, put a golden page on that page they get to after they sign up for your newsletter. Also, maybe you're thinking, well, I don't have a special discount or a special offer. Even just put your full price thing that you sell. Now, it's probably not going to be as successful as if you gave a discount, but at least you're giving people an opportunity to buy from you. You're serving it up on a silver platter saying, here's what I have to sell. Does this meet your needs? Yes or no? Because I think often we don't do that enough in an online business. Just put our products and services in front of people over and over again. That's such a great lesson. Like we started out in this whole thing, most people are, or a lot of people at least, are really hesitant to put their products and services out there and tell people what they have. So if you take nothing else from this session, at least remember that it's okay to promote, it's okay to talk about your programs, products and services on social media sites. But I think one of the best lessons here is really think about that under the radar strategy that Laura Mm -hmm. talked about, where you're just having a conversation with a friend and telling them what you're working on and what you're excited about and what's going on behind the scenes. I mean, people love to see what you're doing behind the scenes. That always works so well. So there's a lot of ways just to talk about your programs, products, and services and sell them. I had a client the other day that we were building an online, or excuse me, we were building an opt-in page for her. And she said, okay, well, I'm not going to really tell people about the opt-in page for a few weeks because I'm new on Facebook and I I just need to build up my likes. And I said, why wouldn't you want to tell them about (laughs) a free giveaway that you have? She wasn't even selling anything. And I think there's just this weird mindset that you don't want to be too pushy, which is great because we don't want you to be too pushy, right? Right. But there's just, you've got to really think, I think it all comes down to mindset and think about, hey, I've got something of great value that could make your Mm -hmm. life easier. I think there need, you need to look at it a different way. Do you see what I'm saying there? Absolutely. And, you know, you, you brought up a great point about, oh, I need to build up my audience first. You know, that's another really, really common thing that I hear. But the people that are there, they like you now. <laughs> you yes. know, the 30 people that you have on your Facebook page, they're there because they were interested in your business. You know, I always tell people, don't think of it as a number. Don't think of it as a list. Imagine that they're actual humans in a room. I know for, for my, I have a very successful business. And if, even if I do like a free meetup or something like that, and I have 25 people show up, that's a lot of people. So if you have 25 real humans (laughs) on your list or, you know, 25 likes on your Facebook page, those are real people. You need to be very excited if they showed up in a room and wanted to hear more about, about your business. Great point. I mean, get excited about those numbers. I think another thing we all have to remember in social media is don't compare yourself to anybody else, especially those that have the big numbers. They started yeah. right where you're at. And yeah. I love that. Next time you look at your numbers and you think, oh, I don't have enough Facebook fans. Think about all those people at your home right now sitting in your family room. <laughs> That's such a great right. point, though. That would be really exciting if all those people were there to show up and listen to you. And that's essentially yeah. what they are doing there on that social site. Absolutely. I love that. That's that's such a great way to wrap it up, just to think of, be appreciative of what you have and treat those people like they are golden to you. I mean, mm-hmm. speaking of the golden page, treat your audience <laughs> like they're golden as well. So thanks so much, Laura, for being here today. We definitely learned a lot, a lot of strategies we can put into play. So there's a lot of things we can experiment with. I really appreciate it. Where can people find you online? They can find me at lkrsocialmedia.com is my website, LKR on Twitter and LKR social media on Facebook. Perfect. Definitely make sure you go say hi to Laura and she's got a fantastic blog, lots of content there all about social media. So make sure you go check that out. Laura, thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 